Welcome to week two, where we're gonna talk about energy flow. <laughs> Everything in the world runs on energy, but only some things can get that energy from the sun. Any guess what those might be? Mm. Well, what about plants? Like this algae or kelp or grass or trees. Most life on earth runs on energy from the sun, including us, but animals cannot make energy from the sun. If you could, you could go outside, put your arms up and the sun would be your breakfast. That's how plants eat. Here to tell you more about the algae in your kits is Matt. My name is Matt Huber and I own a small company in San Diego, California called Algae Research and Supply. Um, we're here because we really firmly believe that you guys and everybody out there needs to learn about growing algae. It's responsible for half of the Earth's photosynthesis. And if we're ever going to really understand climate change here on the planet from CO2, carbon dioxide, we need to know about the other half of the planet's photosynthesis, which is algae. And so I've dedicated my lab and my life to really getting this out there so that everybody can, can uh, get their hands on some algae. Because... It's important. So um, it's great to work with uh, the folks up in Tacoma uh, to be able to, to get our message out there to all you wonderful fifth graders. But what is algae? Um, algae is um, basically microscopic leaves, in a sense. They produce a lot of the world's oxygen. What does it need to grow? What does algae need to grow? That's a great question. Algae is just like a terrestrial plant. It needs to have water. It needs to have light. It needs to have nutrients. Um, I like to add a little bit of love too, but that isn't necessarily a requirement to grow algae, but it just helps. What are the ideal growing conditions for a brine shrimp? Growing conditions for the brine shrimp. Uh, first of all, the water needs to be really salty. Can you describe salty water? So the water needs to be salty. We're talking a little bit more salty than the ocean. And that's what our brainy briny kits are coming with the salt bag. Next, they need to have a food source, which is the algae. Um, and they also need to be, they need to be warm. We'd like them to be around 80 degrees Fahrenheit or better. And that's gonna help them to get from hatching all the way to being an adult. What if somebody wants to grow their algae in the closet? If you were to grow your algae in a closet, it would probably be lonely and want friends. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you could grow your algae in the closet, but it would need to have some kind of light source. So you could put your light inside there um, and that would be okay. And as a matter of fact, it, if you kept it in the closet, it might be a little bit better too if your closet got a little bit warmer. Um, I understand that up in Tacoma, it can be a little chilly. Um, so <laughs> these microalgae strains, they grow a little bit faster when you keep them warmer. So that's one of the things that you want to keep in mind. Why didn't the two algae ever date? I didn't. I don't know. Because they had a planktonic relationship. <laughs> <laughs> algae, like the stuff in here, is a water plant. And just like land plants, it eats the sun to make food. Algae absorbs light. And that's the first step in energy flow. Next, the algae turns the energy from the sun into food and oxygen. The algae uses that food to grow. Algae is a producer that gets consumed by animals. And that's how animals get energy from the sun. Here we have some kelp and some algae that we got right off of our dock here at Foss Waterway Seaport. This is a primary producer. It uses photosynthesis to grow. These little guys, we have a turtle and a fish. They eat things like algae and kelp. They are called primary consumers. And over here, we have two whales and a shark. These guys are secondary consumers. They eat things like the fish. Is it true that you have a plan to save the world? Uh, my plan is to basically get all of you students out there to understand enough about algae to go and build bioreactors and grow algae enough so that we can reduce all of the, the uh, enough of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to bring us back down so that we don't have as much global warming and we can understand how we can control our own climate so that humans can live here for a lot longer. <laughs>